I've wanted to take my shop off the grid, or at least partially off the grid, for some time now. And a few months ago, I got a set of Vatra 100 amp hour, 51.2 volt batteries. And I got those batteries with the intent of using them here in the shop to power all of my lights and all of my small circuits. I won't be powering my big planer, or table saw, or miter saw with them, my heat and air conditioning, or my big dust collector. So I'm not going to be fully off grid, at least not yet. I just can't afford the big inverter that I would need to do that, let alone enough batteries to power everything. But I do hope to get there someday. But I decided that what I could do is I could take my all-in-one system that I have and use those two Vatra batteries, which gives me over 10 kilowatt hours of power, to power all the ancillary devices that run a lot of the time. Now, why Vatra? Well, I'll tell you this. I've actually had some Vatra batteries in my camper for, well, I think this will be my third winter with those batteries. They actually have done very well for me. I've never had any issues with them. I've been really impressed with them. I love the Bluetooth app. I love the way they run. Now, as I mentioned, these are 100 amp hour, 51.2 volt batteries. That means that they're 5,120 watt hours per battery, but they're rated at 5,000 cycles at 100%. That means that you can drain them 100% and charge them back up all the way 5,000 times. And then that only leaves them at about 80% capacity at the end of that 5,000 cycles. Well, that should last me longer than I'm going to have to worry about powering my shop. You can parallel 10 of these batteries to give you 51.2 kilowatt hours of power. That would be enough to power my entire shop. Now these are also EV grade A cells, so they're good battery cells. They're enclosed in an SPCC shell, which is spill prevention control and countermeasures. In other words, it's a really good case. It's a steel case that is designed to house these batteries and keep them safe for you. You can also set them both vertical or horizontal and you'll notice that I have mine vertically positioned right now. Now the batteries are equipped with a 100 amp BMS. They're protected from overcharging, over discharging, short circuiting and extreme temperatures. They've got low temperature charge protection down to 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius and they can discharge down to minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit, which is minus 20 Celsius. So, that's pretty standard in the battery world today, but I thought I would point that out. So these are good batteries. I've been really happy with Vatra in the past. They've done me well when I've taken them, discharged them all the way down, charged them back up, used them to power power stations and all kinds of stuff. So I'm pretty excited to get this done. But let me show you what I've done right now. We'll go out into the shop and I'll show you what I put together. All right, folks, here we go. We got our two Vatra batteries. They both have 125 amp breakers, so I'm not actually installing a breaker up here for now. I'm going to run them to these T-class fuses, and then from the T-class fuses up to the bus bar, and then finally up to the all-in-one system. And then on the negative side, we just run it up to a bus bar and up to the all-in-one system. Now I do have them just sitting on some quarter inch plywood right now. I probably will make something else to put them on, but for now, that's where they're gonna sit. Once we get them completely wired out all the way up to the all-in-one system, then what we'll do is we'll set a main panel over here and run conduit from under the all-in-one system up to that main panel and run conduit from that system all the way around the corner. And what we'll do here is we'll install a 60 amp breaker that will feed the charge side or the utility side of this all-in-one system so that I can charge up those Vatra batteries and if they get really low or I don't have enough solar it could also take over the circuits that run off of it. The next phase of course once all this gets wired up is to run my solar in and I'm going to be putting in initially 1600 watts of solar. I've actually got another 800 that I can add once I get that set up, but for now, we'll just have 1600 watts of solar. And what I'll do there is I'll run that out to a DC disconnect switch, and then from that, out the wall for the panels that I'll be installing. And what I'm installing, and hidden under this plastic, are my 400 watt bifacial panels that will get installed using this ground mount rack, which is an adjustable rack. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull out any of the small outlets, the shop lights, the um, 
some of the regular outlets. Nothing that I'm going to use heavy equipment on, so I'll leave things like my floor outlets and my planer outlets and that kind of stuff will all run off the main power. Everything else will get moved from that panel and then run it over to that panel instead. So it won't be on the grid at all. So there's no chance I can back feed or anything like that. So that's it, pretty simple. It's gonna take up this corner. I'll probably have to look at putting a kind of a little room over it or something maybe in the future to keep the dust down. But for now, I think we're gonna be good to go. And this is kind of what I'm thinking I'm gonna leave it as. Though I may take these Vatro batteries, turn them 90 degrees so that I can add some more perhaps in the future. So there you have it, pretty straightforward. I got a lot of work to do. I still need to finish this cable here, which is eight gauge. So I've got to put another one here. And then I've got to run my four gauge from here up to the all-in-one system, just like I've done there. And of course I also have to attach the other battery to here. So we'll get that part done. And then I'll start working on my main panel that'll come off of this system here. All in all, pretty excited about it. I got a lot of power. I'll be able to run my lights for a long time. And heck, maybe I can run my chicken coops little heater too while I'm at it. Well, there you have it, folks. I've got just over 10 kilowatt hours of battery power with a 3,500 watt inverter. I will have utility backup so that I can charge those batteries when they hit a certain low point, if they hit that point. And I'll be able to use 2,000 watts of solar charging to keep those batteries charged up every day. But you know, if the sun don't come out, it's snowy, it's just miserable out, and I'm not getting any solar charging, I'll be able to use my utility power to charge the batteries back up as well. So that's going to be great. And honestly, folks, being able to run my security lights, all the lights inside the shop, including in this room where I film all the time, and my stereo and all kinds of ancillary devices is really exciting. And I'm really looking forward to getting this done and showing you it in use and having having that little bit of freedom from the power company. So anyway, there you go, folks. I've got work to do still, and I will bring you along as I complete this job. But I thought I would update you on my status because I have mentioned it before on the channel. Well, I'm finally getting around to it. I still got to get some more wire. I got to get a panel and some conduit and things like that. And we're going to get all that done. And once I get it all done, of course, I'll bring it to you. But I'm really excited. And I love the fact that I can add some more of these Vatura batteries as I need to, up to 10 of them. Heck, I could probably run my house on that. I just want to run my shop and maybe not have quite as much power draw on the utility bill every month. I think this is going to do it for me. Now I'm going to throw another video right out here for you to check out. Thanks again for watching, folks. And thanks to all my members. I really appreciate your being here. Y'all have a great day. I got to go back out and work on my system. The old jarhead out.